So this video is going to be pretty fun. We're going to be modeling some sort of um, accessory piece that maybe could act as a storage container, could act as maybe some sort of cool first aid kit, maybe a weapons accessory. It's kind of the nice thing when you're designing these more futuristic types of things. You can get pretty creative with it and do a bunch of different implied functionality to your design. So that's what we're going to make in this video. I'll have it popped up on the screen, the render, so you get an idea. And this should be pretty simple to start with, but if you're not used to Blender, make sure you grab our hard surface modeling jumpstart course, which is free on our website. Otherwise, this tutorial might be a little bit too advanced for you. So what we're going to do here is start with the default cube as usual. Now, if you want to get the cube looking like mine, you're going to have to go here. You're going to have to go to mat cap change over to both turn on cavity before you do that and then you can just copy my settings here and you're going to have this cool looking default cube so the first thing i want to do is make this thing really skinny so maybe scale this on the x and just kind of eyeball it maybe to around here and then we can also scale this a bit on the y as well hop into side view take a look at it scale this a bit on the z in this direction and then usually once I have a base type of shape going on, what I like to do is start kind of adding some more dynamic elements to it by introducing Boolean cuts and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and press the D key and we're going to go into box cutter. If you don't have box cutter, get it. It's an amazing add on. And we're just going to hold control and just kind of cut some sort of wedge here. We can always move this around and change things. Right now, my main goal is to get something that's kind of you know, visually appealing. So maybe I could actually do something like that. And we'll probably end up tweaking this and moving it around and things like that. Um, maybe I could cut in this direction from the front. So you can just press one on the numpad. And usually what I'm doing is I'm just introducing a bunch of different planar shifts, which can be a really powerful way to just introduce these different uh, visually appealing elements to your designs. And then maybe here on the side, I could go more like this. All I'm trying to do is break the monotony of this shape. That's really it. I could even try just cutting in shape, seeing what I like. I could even try introducing a mirror modifier here and more or less move that a little bit. And that looks pretty good. Move that on the Z axis as well and then maybe mirror on the Y as well. And then what I want to do is press Q and then ever scroll. And just try to, you know, reposition some of these cuts here. So maybe, you know, this one I could move around. Um, let's go ahead and maybe apply the mirror just so that way we can change things. Um, but it's not going to be happy with us. So we might as well just smart apply everything. And we can start this as our, as our base shape. I think this could be good. It's not too bad. I do want to have this area a little bit wider. So again, you can just kind of move things around and play with it. So what I'm going to need to do is go into vertex mode, press Z to go into wireframe. And we're going to box select this half only. So that way I can move this over, give some more space. And then if you have mesh machine, you can press alt X to symmetrize to the other side. But in this case, we need to make sure our origin point is on that 3d cursor. Otherwise it will symmetrize over that origin point. So we're going to right click, set origin to 3D cursor, symmetrize, and now we have a little bit more space to maybe introduce, you know, some sort of cool boolean cut or something like that. Now what I also want to do here is maybe introduce like a little wedge kind of here in the top, and this is where we could start bringing a little bit of our visual focus into the design. So I'm going to add in this cut, recall it with ever scroll, scale it a little bit on the Y, and then just to fix the shading, you can select this and shift click on sharpen and move your mouse to the right. And eventually it will catch those edges. All that's really doing is adjusting the auto smooth angle here. As you can see, this is a pretty low angle, but it does get the job done. And then what I want to do here is simply press uh, shift two to hide the cutters collection. And I think we can go ahead and apply this Boolean as well because what I'd like to do is introduce some bevels to all these edges right here. So just control B and just get this nice dynamic type of, you know, flowiness to the shape. If that's even a word, I don't know. 
but you see what I mean, it kind of looks visually appealing, which is precisely, you know, what I want. I'm also going to press Alt X and then mirror to the bottom as well, and just try to get that basic shape going. Now what I would like to have is some sort of bevel, like a rounded bevel around here. Uh, unfortunately, if I try to do that as is, it's just going to be a really weird looking bevel. I mean, it could work, but what I think I'm going to do instead is introduce another Boolean cut here. Maybe we can go in at an angle kind of like that. A little bit too steep. Maybe we'll just stick with a basic cut kind of like that. And then Alt X to symmetry or uh, mirror over. And then what I can do is apply this Boolean modifier and bevel this. And then maybe bevel this edge as well. That could be kind of cool. And then ultimately we have this cool looking kind of base shape that we can start uh, working with. Now I think this area here might be just a little bit too, too long. So what I could do is, you know, go back here into the top view and box select the first half. I'm going to show you a cool hack though. Since we have our, um, we can apply this mirror modifier and what I can do is press Alt X to run another mirror modifier on the X. And if I move this on the X, what that's actually going to do is move the mirrored side inwards as well. So it's a lot quicker than, you know, moving the geometry back physically. You can kind of hack it by using another mirror modifier. So pretty cool modeling tip there. And we can go ahead and apply that. And now you're going to see if I try to move it, it just moves the whole thing because we don't have a mirror kind of counteracting that movement, right? So I do want this thing to lay flat. So what I'm going to do is press R, Y, and then 90. And we're going to have kind of this flat shape. And it does look cool. You can kind of see these nice planar shifts going on. And um, it just kind of has a little bit more visual appeal than the default cube, of course. So now what I want to do is start deciding where exactly I want to introduce the elements that bring visual appeal. So form, and also where I could introduce elements that might also count as a functional element, right? So if you can kind of balance those two, getting a functional element that also emphasizes the form of the design, you'll end up getting some really cool results. And that's kind of the best way to work if you want to go for something that could be like a, a realistic item, right? Or look like it might be realistic. So what I'm going to do here is first of all, right click and set the origin to the geometry just to reset that into the center because this piece is not centered on the grid. And then what I can do is press Shift S, selection to cursor. Now we're perfectly centered on the grid, so that way if I use mirrors or symmetries, we won't have any issues. So let's go ahead and add in a cube. So Shift A and then cube. We're gonna scale this down a little bit smaller than this right here. Scale it a bit on the Y, and then on the X all the way through. And then I'm gonna press Control A and apply the scale and just bevel all these edges here. So what I can do is press Control Alt and left click, Control B to bevel. Let's give it a good amount of segments, I'm not too worried about the poly count. And I'm gonna press the C key to clamp it so that way it doesn't go like this. And then if I just click, now we kind of have this shape. However, if I run the Boolean, it's gonna work fine, but one thing I do wanna point out is that when we you know, ran this bevel here, the two edges met at the center. So we actually have some overlapping geometry here. Really easy way to fix that is to select everything and press M and merge by distance and that'll remove them. And then what I wanna do is just go back into object mode, right click to shade auto smooth, and then just run a difference Boolean here on this object. I'm gonna use hard ops for that. And now we kind of have this cool cut going through the object as you can see. Now one final thing I wanna do is introduce a chamfer around the outside here. Now you can do this two different ways. You could apply the Boolean and then run the chamfer that way. So like that. Um, however, I like to work as non-destructively as possible, meaning I can move things around if needed. So I much prefer to keep the Boolean live so I can move it around and use the Boolean for that instead. So check this out. I'm gonna scale this on the X until it's right about there. Control A to apply the scale. And then if I go into face mode, select this face, press Alt N to flip the normals. It'll actually allow me to bevel in the inverted direction, which is really cool and kind of saves you um, a bit of a headache from having to apply that Boolean. And then we'll just press Alt X and mirror to the other side. 
until we have this shape going on. Pretty cool. So, so far so good. Um, I'm trying to think if this isn't a little bit too tight, but I think it'll be okay. I think it's um, right where it should be. So this looks great. Now, ultimately the game of 3D modeling is not only trying to create cool looking designs, but also knowing where to place elements. So what I want to do here is kind of take a look at this overall form and figure out how could I add additional elements around this area to bring more visual interest, focus, and also appeal. So what we're going to do here is maybe let's, um, let's apply the boolean. I'm happy with that. What I'm going to do here on the inside is take this edge. If you don't have one, you can just press control R to add one. And I'm going to go ahead and move this over control B to bevel E to extrude right click and then alt S to scale along the normals. I also like to turn on offset even like that. And then we can scale this on the X kind of like this. That yeah, looks pretty cool. Now it's going to look even better if we introduce some bevels here. So let's go ahead and alt shift click all these edges and then just introduce a nice bevel on those. And you're going to see it looks a lot softer now, which is exactly what I want. What bevels like this are essentially doing is kind of connecting the different changes in planes and making it into one plane. It's a confusing concept, but if you take a look at the difference, Basically, we have a plane here, and then we have a plane here, and we have a plane here. And by introducing bevels, we're kind of flowing that all into one single plane, if that makes sense. That's why bevels tend to look more visually appealing and also make it look a little bit less noisy, if that makes sense. So I'd really recommend using bevels whenever you can, given the context makes sense. Now, what I want to do is just Alt-X to symmetrize over to the other side. So that way we have the same detail on that side as well. So you're going to see essentially what we've done is not only introduced more visual appeal, but we have also introduced a concept called echoing where we take a shape, in this case this oval that already exists, and we repeat it with additional visual elements, which is a really powerful way to bring more attention to certain areas of your model. So I'm happy with this. Looks good. Uh, now what we could do is maybe just kind of pan around just get some ideas I'm thinking maybe some handles here on the side could be pretty cool so let's start with the default cube and just kind of work our way around with that see what types of shapes we can get so maybe scale this a bit on the Y a bit on the X maybe move this in a little bit I don't know and let's go ahead and run a difference boolean here now, of course, um, we need to bevel these edges to make it look more interesting. So let's press Control A to apply the scale. Control Alt left click to select all of these. And we can just run a bevel. We can also press Alt X and turn on advanced mode to mirror over the 3D cursor and just kind of see how this looks. A little bit boring, a little bit bland. So what we're going to try to do here. So maybe just play with the scale and see what different positionings look good, look bad, and that type of thing. I think this is way too large, so maybe what we could do is rotate this, move this here, kind of get the idea I'm going for, and now it's a little bit less visually heavy on the design, so I think maybe we could do something like that. And let's also um, make sure we right click and shade smooth the cutter because we have some issues here um, that didn't seem to fix it so maybe I just need to adjust the auto smooth a little bit there we go and that looks pretty good to me and um, we can always move this around if we need to as long as we don't apply the boolean awesome so I would like to do that bevel trick um, that I showed you before so what I could do is take this face move it down but notice since this plane here is a little bit curved down it kind of hits this point before this one you see what I mean see what it's doing so if I try to run that reverse bevel trick with alt n and flip it and then bevel it it's gonna kind of work but this bevel on this side is gonna be a bit larger than on this side because the planes kind of going down you see what I mean so a really easy way to fix this is uh, well, there's a few different ways the easiest way would be to just apply the boolean and then bevel it that way right However, you won't be able to move that geometry around after you do that. And like I said, my personal workflow is I prefer to work as non-destructively as possible, meaning I keep the booleans live. 
So I'm gonna show you a pretty cool way to deal with this. We're gonna take the cutter, right? And I could be accurate with it, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. What we're gonna do here is click right along this edge, hold control, and then cut to there. And then cut over here, and we're gonna cut the cutter basically. See what I did? There we go, and then we can apply that boolean on the cutter. And now if we try to do it, we're gonna have a, a much cleaner result. So let's press Alt-N to flip, run the bevel. I might have cut in a little bit too far, so let me just move this up on the Z just a notch. Don't tell anyone, we'll just slightly move that. And then we should be good. And um, now we have the freedom to move this cutter around as we please, which is awesome. So just a cool modeling hack for you there. I'd recommend using that whenever you can because it'll save you some time, a bit of a headache. And also maybe we could repeat that same type of element we did in here. And what we could do is Alt X and mirror that on the Z. And let's just go ahead and take this cutter. Let's apply the mirror on this cutter. And then if I take this edge here on the inside, I can press Control B to bevel it. And just like we did before, E to extrude, right click to cancel, and then Alt S, offset even, then we can even scale this a bit on the Z, and then just bevel these areas, and then just looks a little bit more, you know, interesting. See what I did? And then we can press Alt X to mirror it over there as well, and now we have this shape. So one other idea I have here is that maybe we could take this, um, this set of edges right here and bevel those. We could do that or we could do it to this portion here instead. So just control click along and control B. We can't bevel too far because it might end up hitting this area but you could do like a small bevel. Let's try this one again. Looks pretty interesting. We can mirror that to the other side as well and then to the bottom. Yeah, it's not too bad, I like that. And speaking of bevel, we could introduce a really small holding bevel by pressing Q and just give like a really tiny bevel right there just so it kind of highlights the edges, see what I did? Looks good. So generally when you're working on these types of designs, it's always a good rule of thumb to be able to look at all the different sides and see roughly the same amount of detail. So each side is basically detailed in some way. So if I go to the top, we have detail. If I go to the side, we have some. If I go to the front, we don't really have too much, to be honest. But you could always introduce, you know, your own little spins on the design. For example, you could come in here and introduce, like, a, just something like that. And you could just kind of play with it and make this your own shape, right? Um, we'll do that a bit later. So for right now, kind of looking at this from all different sides, I'm thinking what we could do is start clustering some more detail here in the front. So what I'm going to do is press the D key, go into box cutter. We're going to use the line box tool here. And what I want to do is click and then click again. We're going to make a really small indentation. We'll press the B key. We'll fix these shading artifacts later. And let's just go ahead and take these cutters and Alt X to the other side. And now we have this cool looking detail here in the front. I like it. Could even scale that up a bit if we wanted to. Awesome, so it looks good to me. And now if we take a look at this, we can kind of see like this is where the viewer is going to probably look right up front. Like the first thing they kind of see is this detail here in the front. Travels around, sees this detail. Then we have the negative space here kind of pulling us back in, which is cool. Um, now if I go to the front here, what I think would be cool is like I said, introducing that little cut here on the side. So not only do we get some additional anchors here on the left and on the right, but also we have some detail here on the side. So let's just go ahead, take the default cube, or you could just use box cutter, it doesn't really matter. Let's move a cube over here, scale this on the X, control A to apply the scale. And then we're just gonna take these two edges and bevel, right click to shade auto smooth, and then run a difference boolean here on this piece and then just make sure you mirror that cutter to the other side with alt x so now we have some detail here kind of offsetting this one but still keeping focus here and we also have detail here on the side 
So as you can see, this is really just a step-by-step -step process of progressively adding detail according to the rules that make your designs look more visually appealing, right? So what I could do here is maybe introduce a chamfer around this area, but I'm going to have to apply that boolean. I can't really do the, the boolean or the bevel hack like we did before, unfortunately, but we'll probably do that later, maybe. I kind of like how that looks. For right now, what I'm imagining is maybe this thing opens up. There's like a lid, you go into the inside, and whatever this is, there you can get inside of it, right? So in order to kind of communicate that type of effect, what we're going to need to do is create a separation here through the middle. So let's press Shift A and add in a plane. Scale this plane up, and what we're going to do is basically extrude this up a little bit here. And then we can just press Alt X to symmetrize down to make it nice and even. And then I'm just going to shift click and run a difference boolean. Now it looks like uh, went a little bit crazy and that is most likely because I have this um, edge here. So what's happening, uh, This I know this just because I've been doing Blender long enough. The reason it's not running the difference boolean like we would expect is because essentially what's happening here is we have this edge right here through the center. And what that's doing is it is basically overlapping with the edge right here. It's in the same exact point in 3D space. So when you run a difference boolean and the two points are in the same exact spot in 3D space, Blender doesn't know how to calculate it. It's technically considered like non-manifold, I would guess. Um, but there is an easy way to fix that. What we can do, let me go back a few notches here. So what we can do is we can either dissolve out this edge here, which um, it's not letting me. And if it doesn't let you dissolve out the edges, that basically means this is actually a face here on the inside. So I'm going to press X, delete faces, and now I should be able to dissolve that out. And as a matter of fact, it might even work as a difference boolean. Yeah, there we go. So it was just the face issue on the inside. Another thing that may have worked is the exact boolean, but it's much better to clean up geometry that's non-manifold like that, just to avoid these issues. Anyways, dissolve this if you want, doesn't really matter. I'm gonna scale this a bit on the Z, and then run a difference boolean here. I want this to be very, very small. I don't want it to be like a massive like eye pulling detail here, right? I just want this to be very, very subtle kind of like that and now we kind of have that uh, shape kind of communicating hey maybe this thing opens right so my first attempt at making this thing I actually much prefer this design because it looks a little bit more feasible in terms of something you could use in real life um, so I guess you got the uh, good end of the stick for this tutorial because I like this design a heck of a lot more but it's very important to mention that if it wasn't for all these planar shifts these elements being placed strategically, these bevels, everything playing together. If you don't have these elements kind of creating the shape and you're just randomly placing detail, you're not going to accomplish the same level of visual appeal. I'll have people tell me, you know, who are you to say what, what the rules of visual design are? I mean, you know, I can have my own creativity. Yes, but if you're just slapping details all over the place with no rhyme or reason, it is not going to look as aesthetically pleasing as people who are following rules like echoing, planar shifts, bevels, things like that. So make sure you know, you're really using these types of um, visual design principles to your advantage because they are very, very important. If you guys haven't picked up our Hard Surface Academy program, I'd highly recommend doing that. And if that's a little bit too much out of your budget, um, you'll be fine with the Blender Bros Design course, which basically goes into all this type of stuff in depth. And we also have another course on this stuff coming out uh, sometime soon, not too sure when. Anyways, um, without you know talking about that too much more, you can really feel this thing as being you know a big chunk of metal, right? You can kind of see the bevels are playing the matte cap and cavity highlights are playing together to really define the overall shape. And that is why I'm so obsessive with using cavity and matte cap because without it, you don't really have much of a shape to work with. You need to be able to see those shadows and those edge highlights. They're very important. So it might be tempting at this point to start filling in the empty space with a bunch of detail. But like I just said, you don't always need to slap detail everywhere. Detail that doesn't exist is oftentimes 
the most powerful type of detail. Literally no detail can be some of the best types of details you can use. What I mean by that is this empty space here. We call this negative space. If I have a bunch of detail placed here in the middle, if I just start adding booleans and random stuff, um, and I'll just quickly show you so you get the idea. You know, a lot of people, including myself when I first got started, would be very tempted to start introducing random stuff like this. And look at this, it's just a mess now. This is why, you know, using that negative space is very powerful to bring attention to the areas that actually matter. And the best way to do that is kind of, um, you know, bringing attention to the more functional elements that you might have in your design. So I don't think we need to push this one too much further. We could add like smaller details and things like that, but um, I don't think it's necessary. But what we could do is introduce some decals and trim sheets to really make this thing look a lot more visually appealing. So we're gonna add the materials, really make this thing pop. So let's go ahead and go into look dev mode. And as always, I'm gonna be using the abandoned slipway HRI, which is free on polyhaven.com, a nice neutral overcast HRI. So the first thing I wanna do is um, let's go to material mode and let's just uh, play with the material here. So first of all, we can make the base color a little bit darker. We can make it metallic and we can also play with the roughness a bit. Now we're not gonna be able to see too much detail here until we actually preview this in rendering mode. But um, what I'm gonna do here is um, go and add in a plane. So shift A and then plane. And we're just gonna put a plane right here on the bottom and uh, basically just add a material to this one. This could be you know, a darker material. We could even try some more realistic materials here in a second, but for right now, I just wanna get like something basic here. And then we're just gonna go into rendering mode. Now make sure in rendering mode, you also have the environment texture connected with the same exact HDRI. So now if I kinda of move around, you're gonna see how this thing looks. Now the light's coming from this direction, as you can see. So ideally, we want to kind of, you know, angle the render kind of at this direction and not in the back because all the light's hitting the front here. So what I'm going to do is press Shift A to add in a camera, and we're just going to work on finding a good position for that camera. So maybe around here, we'll press, um, we'll go here to view, align view, and then align active camera to view. can move this back and turn off the overlays, and maybe we can go for a more long lens like 225 it'll look more orthographic this way and we can just kind of position that maybe right around there we could also try using a 21 by 9 so 3440 by 1440 so that way it's kind of filling that frame a bit better only issue is YouTube thumbnails are at 16 by 9 so I'm gonna have to tweak that after I record but I think a uh, 21 by 9 for this particular model looks pretty good so I like to render at a higher resolution and then downscale if needed 3440 by 1440 is a good resolution for that so at this point we kind of have the camera angle we have the lighting hitting it from the front here what we can do is start tweaking the materials now so let's go ahead and kind of play with the floor color we can make this darker or make it brighter just kind of depends on the um, aesthetic you're going for. Dark could look great, but also white could be a little bit interesting as well. I could do that. I also want to move this camera just a bit right around there. And then also for this material, we could play with the color as well. So I could make it darker or brighter. I don't want to make it too close to the backdrop. So maybe right around here, and then we can make the roughness definitely reflective kind of like that and make sure we keep it as metallic now if you want to get fancy with it you could also use some um, like realistic materials for example a really good material pack is the EV and cycles material system by chip Walters so for example if you wanted to you could just select the floor and add like a aluminum matte material and then you kind of have this you know let me apply the scale you kind of have this nice aluminum material kind of covering the floor which could add a little bit of an additional visual effect there if you wanted to do that. You could also do the same thing to the actual model here. Um, one of my favorites, one of my favorite materials in this pack comes from the tech menu. 
it's these hex carbon little dots or whatever we can add the material and basically um, we just have to increase the scale by going over to the shader editor and then just increasing the scale here uh, maybe a little bit too high we'll try 5 2.5 and 5 and then we kind of have this nice texture on the object you see what I mean we also want to make it metallic as well and then you kind of get this cool looking like rough pattern here on the object but to keep it simple I'm just going to use the basic materials we have before just the basic principled BSDF materials those will be fine so let me just undo this a few times and this will be alright another thing you could try doing is rotating the HRI just to see if slightly rotating it looks any better so if we go to the shader editor and go to world and press Control T, make sure you have Node Wrangler turned on. What we can do is rotate the HDRI in small 45 degree increments and just kind of see, you know, as we rotate it, how does the lighting differ from before? So 180 is going to be in the back, which I don't want. Maybe 270, or that's not too bad, but it's still hitting the back. Could try 315, and we could try 0. And we could try 45, or we could try maybe 22.5. I think the 315 look the coolest, but again, we're not really highlighting the areas we want highlighted. Now, what we could do, check this out. If we take a look at where the lighting's coming from, which is kind of in this direction, a little bit more rotated, as you can see. So it is going to hit a bit more of the back of this piece. So what we're going to need to do is maybe if we want to highlight the front a bit what we could do is add in a reflector so we add in a plane move this plane back and rotate it and really scale this up but it needs to be out of the frame of the camera and it also needs to you know be positioned where the lights coming from or it won't reflect properly so what you might want to do is you know just move this around see if scaling this does any sort of change to the object it's very subtle but you know we could try playing with this generally it's going to need to be closer so you're just going to have to kind of tweak it see what types of results you get so right here very subtle change we could add a new material make it pure white you can kind of see the difference if it's pure black it gets darker pure white it gets brighter and we can make this fully rough and we're just going to get a small kind of reflection there to the front making it just a little bit brighter like that so i definitely like this i like the shadows i like how the light's working on it and it doesn't look too bad at all um, and at this point you just want to make any final changes you might want to make uh, i honestly think it's fine where it is and we're going to go ahead and render this now before we render, um, I did forget to add some decals like I said I would, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. So decals are a great way to just make this thing look more you know, interesting, like it's an actual piece. So for example, what I could do is go into our decal packs. We have a ton of decal packs available for purchase over on our website. I would recommend picking up our ultimate trim sheet and decal pack. It has over 400 decals total of 24 trim sheets textured and non-textured so what we're going to do here is just find a basic looking text decal we call these info decals and we're just going to find something that kind of looks looks cool basically so maybe i have no clue what this says i'd have to ask for you but um it's not a matter of reading it it's a matter of making the render look interesting so if you were meant to be reading this you might want to be a bit more careful with your choices um, you know so the context makes sense so what I could do there is just drop a decal and then boom we kind of have like a cool looking like stationary text like a real product might have could do that could also move this a bit more towards the bottom or the side instead so that way we're not like right in the center right and just figure out like which area you want to add it, which area looks good. Just take your time with it, don't rush it. And then maybe here on the top, I could find like a really small, really small decal, maybe like, I don't know, one of these. And just rotate it. 
I'm gonna make the alpha value like 0.2 so that way it's not so bright. Put that right there in the center. And then project it. You can already see this looks a little bit more visually interesting. You could even try implementing some actual decals, so not the text decals, but you know, stuff like this could be cool. So you don't have to actually model it. So I could scale this. And then I could, you know, rotate this like that. Now it kind of looks like a latch or something. I could scale that a bit and then mirror it. And then if you want to change the color, you just go to the match option in the decal machine menu, hold shift, and then you can just, um, you know, match or move the color around. And it looks like we modeled it in, but in fact, it's a, it's a decal. I suppose these we could have used as a decal as well, but it doesn't matter if you model it in or not. It's just a, a matter of efficiency and speed. And then maybe what we could do is, I don't really know what else to add. I mean, this thing looks pretty cool. Maybe like, um, maybe we could do a trim sheet here on the top. So I'll show you how trim sheets work real quick. They're really powerful. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take, let me first of all just smart apply everything to make sure we're good and I'll run power save just to make sure we have a separate file. What I'm going to do here is select this edge or just alt click, alt click these edges. Um, if that doesn't work, just use mesh machine, L select, so alt click the same edge and it's going to select um, these areas basically. Now what I want to do here, I don't know if it'll work, but we're going to try. I'm going to press the Y key and then press offset and I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to also press the Q key to turn off loop slide. And basically what I want is like a small offset detail, more or less like this. It didn't seem to work very well, I think because some of this geometry is in the way. So to make this connect a little bit better, I'm just going to press the K key right click and then just connect it this way instead. We can dissolve out those edges and then symmetrize and symmetrize again. And we can also dissolve out this edge down there through the center. Now we're gonna try this again. Let's try running the offset. Much better. So basically what I could do here is get this really small offset all the way around the object. And then what I could do is go into the trim sheet library Alt click on one of the trims and if I just hold control and scroll through the trims I can get this really nice simple detail kind of around the object. So I'm just gonna find one that I think looks cool and very basic. I don't like going overboard with these but you know just a small detail like that kind of just really helps to emphasize the overall design. See what I mean? Might as well run a mirror modifier on the Z as well, so that way the details on the Z axis too. So you, you know you can kind of see it. It's not very noticeable, but in this case I wasn't trying to make it super noticeable. If you want to make it noticeable, you can find like a much more like appealing trim sheet. Um, I'm gonna have to use the one from the same pack, and you can just kind of scroll through here and see what different trims get you the effects you want. But I like that one. It's very subtle and looks good. And then finally, I'm gonna make this just a little bit brighter, not too bright, but just a tad bit brighter, just so it looks more metallic. And there we go. I definitely like how this looks. Maybe a slightly brighter. Maybe just a bit more. I think right here is good. So let's go ahead and go into solid view and I'm gonna to go to the rendering tab, make sure the sample count is set to 256. We don't need to go that high and that's under the render option not viewport and also turn on the denoise under render so that way it'll denoise it and then we're just going to press the f12 key and wait for it to render and there we go so what i'm going to go ahead and do is go to image and we're going to save the image and we're going to bring this into photoshop now i'd recommend saving this image as a 16-bit rgba tiff it's going to give you the best quality so i'm just going to go ahead and name that you can name it whatever you want and one final thing we need to do here before we go into Photoshop is we need to make sure we do a separate render without this um, plane. Make sure you have the transparent option turned on so that way when it's actually rendering, it's not rendering the HDRI in the back, it's just rendering transparent. What this will do is give us a cutout to select from in Photoshop. We're not going to use this render at all, it's just going to be a cutout. So we'll go ahead, press F12 to render that as well. 
save as, and then you can call this transparent. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and go into Photoshop. So now that we're here in Photoshop, go ahead and take the transparent cutout and shift click to drag the layer here, move it to the bottom, and then just turn it off. Because now if I control click on that layer, we have a perfect cutout. So that means we can, you know, mask it and do things like that and only affect this area. So let's go ahead and select the main layer and press control J. And I'm going to go ahead and go up here to filter and then camera raw filter because I just want to make some very basic effects here to make this thing kind of pop. First of all, the lighting's a bit weak, so you could always bump this up a few notches to maybe like 0 0.3, 0 0.25, whatever. You could also play with the highlights a bit. Don't go crazy. I see a lot of people do this. Just be careful with it. Don't go too crazy. Also, I want to make the clarity a bit higher, so we can make this clarity maybe like point or uh, 30. And also, when you lift clarity, make sure you also lift the shadows because um, it's going to introduce shadows. So we're just going to lift that to the same amount. Click on OK, and there we go. So pretty quick and easy adjustment. You can kind of see the before and after. Now it just kind of pops a bit more. We can really see the inside a bit more as well, which is great. And then what we could do here is kind of um, get a little bit you know, more creative with it. So I could kind of change the colors, a bit of the contrast, things like that. Now I'm just going to use the basic uh, plugins here in Photoshop, so you know the stuff that comes with it. So I'm going to go here to Camera Raw Filter again, and actually no, I'm not going to go here yet. Let's go ahead and go up here to Adjustments and go to the Curves menu. And I'm going to lift this a little bit, make it a tad bit brighter, but also drag this down into an S curve. That's going to introduce a little bit of um, local contrast. You see what I mean? You don't want to go too crazy with it or it's just going to look like all blown out. You see what I mean? So just be careful with it. You can kind of see how that's um, changing the overall image. And also if that's too heavy for you, you can always drop the opacity so that way it's just a portion of that effect coming in. So you could do like 50% on the opacity if you wanted to so it's not so heavy. So that's kind of the difference there. I like the 100%. And then what we could do is maybe add in a little bit of, um, let's go here and go to, uh, where is it, color lookup. And there's these presets in here you can basically scroll through. So this one looks cool. And you can just scroll down, just hovering over this, and just see some of these different presets. This is interesting, but way too dark. So, you know, I, my style is more like very neutral color, so I'm just going to go for this two strip. Looks really nice. Kind of see the color pops a bit more. And uh, yeah, I like that. We can also maybe drop that opacity a bit lower, like 50%. So it's not so heavy on the whites. I don't know. 75 maybe? Or maybe we'll just go 100. Who cares? So that looks great. And then what we could do if we wanted to is introduce a little bit of, um, you know, color here. So you could change the midtones, make those a bit bluer if you wanted to, just very slightly. You could also make the shadows a bit bluer as well, which could be interesting. And then also you can change the highlights if you want to. There's not too many highlights on this particular object, but it's going to affect like the overall image here, like the whole thing, because the whole thing is pretty white. So if you wanted to make this like, you know, a bluish color or maybe more on this end, you know, you could do that. Maybe a bit of yellow and you can kind of see there. Looks a bit interesting. But don't go crazy with it. I see a lot of people just, you know, dragging these sliders for fun. It's not meant to be used like that, to be honest with you. Um, we could go to the midtones and just see how the yellow looks instead. I don't want to go too, and maybe it's a little bit of blue there, and then the shadows. Yeah, let's keep the shadows in the blue area. I like that. Nice kind of contrasting colors to really elevate this look. And you can already see how much better this thing looks. This is why post-processing, whether you like it or not, is so important because the first thing people see on your portfolio is the render, right? The same thing on like a you know an Instagram page if you're like a like a fitness model right you're gonna want to have like the best lighting to show off your muscles and right after a good pump things like that it's just the name of the game that's how you have to play it so make sure you know spend time with this make it look good because it's fun but it's also very important 
Awesome, so one final thing I'd like to do here, and this is a really powerful technique, and I'm gonna show you why. I'm gonna control click on this cutout, and what I'm gonna do is go here to, actually I'm gonna have to make sure I select this layer here, the layer with the image. I'm gonna go here to camera raw filter, and I'm gonna add in a little bit of film grain. So if you hold alt and scroll out, we can go here to effects, and then we're gonna have this option for grain. If I lift this, what it does is it introduces this, these very subtle little dots onto the object, and this is gonna make it look more metallic. So now if I click on OK, it's gonna isolate that only to this particular object here. Now in my opinion, that was way too heavy. You could also try doing it to the entire image. Sometimes it looks better. It's just kind of a matter of experimentation, so we could try you know, running the grain on the entire thing, not too high, but, and that could work, but I think what I'm gonna do is isolate it to this area only, but just make it not too heavy, because if the grain's too heavy, it just looks weird. So you can really zoom in and just kind of see the effect. I don't even know if you can see it with YouTube's compression, but trust me, it's there. And then you have this subtle film grain kind of overlaying the object. So one final thing we could do to kind of enclose this is add in some of our branding. So like our name or company or whatever, and then also a name for this device. So for example, what I like to do is take a, take a logo we use like this C sharp logo. And what I like to do with that is I like to kind of repeat it as like a bigger, oops, as a bigger option here. So the easiest way to do that is to go into Blender, figure out what decal pack that is from I got this one from you ages ago. I don't know if it's still on his store, but like I said, the pack we have on our website for sale has plenty of info decals for you to use. And also we do have two free decal packs if you wanna grab those instead. One is on emissive UIs and one is on sci-fi corporation names. So you can get those on our website for free as well. Uh, anyways, what I wanna do here is just find out which one that is. So if I hover over it, I just need to find the name of that library in my decal library, and then I basically just load that in. Don't ask why it's um, black and red, no idea. I guess it's just how it works. And then we're gonna go to screen, that's gonna remove the black value in the back. And then what I wanna do is drag this to the top, add in a new layer, go to this pure black value, and then Alt Delete. That will fill in the entire image. And then if I hold Alt between these two, I can just clip it to that main image and then basically I just need to change this to color. And maybe instead of screen, I just kind of scroll through these and find one that, you know, gets the job done. And then I can just press Control T and then Alt click to kind of drag this down. I can pull that over there somewhere. A little bit smaller maybe. And then finally, I'm just gonna introduce our Blender Bros logo. So we'll just drag this in. I'm gonna do the same exact thing since this one is, um, Let's put this to the top and move this to the bottom corner. And since this one is white as well, we'll add in a, actually I can just duplicate this layer, Control C, Control V, and then clip it. Uh, that didn't work. Um, let's just go ahead and add in a new layer, Alt Delete, and then clip it there. And then we're just gonna make sure the opacity is a lot lower, more or less the same opacity as this one here. And that is it my friends. This is exactly the process you could use to design something in Blender, get cool materials and textures, and also make it look a lot better inside of Photoshop. So again, here is the before, really boring, and here's the after. And this is why post-processing is so important. If this video was helpful to you, consider going over to blenderbros.com and taking a look at some of our paid courses and products. Lots of amazing stuff in there that I think you'll enjoy, whether you're a game designer, environment artist, or just want to learn how to model, there's something in there for you. And like I said, if you're brand new to hard surface modeling, check out our hard surface modeling jumpstart course over on our website. It is free, a great course, over 30,000 people, and I'll link that in the description. Thanks so much for watching, hope it helped, and I'll see you in the next one.